He's a full-time graphic designer, part-time muralist, and gallery owner. How does he do so much and stay so chill, you ask? How does he cook up such sweet designs, you ask? Who is he, you ask? Just sit down and all will be revealed on this episode of Street Art Adventures. It's looking good. Thanks, dude. We're getting there. Francisco, aka yeah, okay. Lalo Creative. And this is like the flyer for the whole festival, right? Or some yeah, of based, the it's elements? it's based on the design, yeah. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> created the Mural Fest flyer, which all. So we're doing these background elements, then that one there. And then we'll fix these flowers down here, and then I'll get started on the car. How do you start? Um, with this one, since it was kind of like a commission, like they wanted it to be like a 50s style, plus like some heritage. I just kind of did some research and like found images that I thought were interesting, kind of gather them together, make like a mood board. And then I just start drawing. I kind of draw and collage everything because I do everything digitally. I just draw everything kind of separately and then I kind of then just like start moving the pieces to like fudge like the composition and get it to something that I like. I mean, the subject matter was not necessarily the most exciting to me personally because a lot of my work is a lot more like skewed into like, like the Mexican American experience, right? Yeah. I'm a graphic designer, so I'm used to like having to like, you know, do things for people and like make sure that like they get what they want, but still make something that I'm excited about as well. So I was like, even though I wouldn't necessarily like sat down to like paint a story of lumber, <laughs> like it actually ended up being pretty rad. So I was like, okay, this is this is cool. It's such a mystery how to like make a living off of art. Yes. A lot of people, especially yeah. when you're starting out. It's hard when you're starting out for sure. Yeah. Are you a full-time artist now? Okay. Full-time graphic full designer, and then like just moonlight as a painter, I guess. What type of like gigs and projects do you do for graphic design? I mean, I work at Nike. I used to make graphics for apparel. Now I do like more conceptual stuff. There are concepts for like the brand direction. It's a lot of research, a lot of like figuring out what story we're telling. Like this was like 60s, 50s. All right, well, what kind of art was being made at that time? Like what was happening in Vernonia? It seems like a really helpful way to get ideas too. Like if 100%. you're ever stuck, you're probably rarely stuck. I'm always stuck. That's how I do research. Like for yeah, I'm always, I'm you like. You know where to start getting new ideas. You know, whatever resource I can find to feed the beast. Compositionally, I'm thinking like, how do I make this like visually appealing? And like, how do I tell a story? I'm always telling a story. I don't think that people will ever get it completely right. But I think for me, like if there's a story, it becomes a little bit more engaging because it, like even if you don't know it, like you know that there's something happening here. Like for this one, I was thinking like, you know, Vernonia has a long history of vlogging, but then it also has a history of like that vlogging industry like leaving. I find it kind of like poetic. It's like giving people life and like the means to like live, but at the same time, like it also has taken away. You know, it's like changed the landscape forever. Like all of that is tied in, but it's all part of the same story. Like it's not whether it's like I'm pro for lumber, pro conservation. It's just kind of like, well, regardless of that, like stuff already happened. It's very like purposefully like kind of minimal and kind of like wastelandy and eerie that like there's not a lot of stuff in the background. There's no tree that's actually like portrayed in this that hasn't been cut. Yeah, that one's falling. Yeah, like so in my mind I'm like that's like where the change is happening. And then also just like playing with that idea but not being super over the top with it. Chainsaw is God. <laughs> yeah, or the man, you know, mankind. So do you have any advice as a full-time professional artist for someone who's trying to become a full-time professional artist? Yeah, a lot. One of my things 
it's like being real with people and just like thinking about that you're gonna get your butt kicked a lot and you're gonna get told no a lot. As long as you like keep moving towards your goal, even if you're doing like one drawing a week or one drawing a month, but like you're working towards that goal, you will get there eventually. But like it's also okay to like not be super productive all the time because that's like unrealistic. So I think it's like maybe, you know, looking at things with patience. I've definitely had to grind working like customer service jobs for a very long time. I think it's like just keep grinding and just keep showing up and doing excellent work regardless. And it wasn't until like way later, now I'm getting to paint murals. Even though you're not like a logger, <laughs> it does match your style of other things that I've seen. Do you feel very uh, spiritual about like each concept or creativity in general? Do you have any like... Nah. Deeper? Nah. <laughs> I, I know a couple of people that are into it in that way, but I feel like I'm so practical. This might be crazy to other artists, but sometimes I view it as a trade. I do like get to do stuff that's more conceptual, but like at the end of the day, like we're just problem solving and just like using our skills to make, you know, something that looks chill. Carpenters use their experience and skills to like build, you know, homes. I'm into it yeah. in that sense, but I don't think, like I don't have some like idea of like high art. As soon as we start, it like no longer belongs to us. Like it belongs to the community. So it's like, how are you gonna be uptight about something that like no longer belongs to you? 